Okay, so um, thank you for coming. My name is Jeff Larkin. I work in the Developer Technologies Group at NVIDIA, which means uh, my job is to make sure that developers get the, the best experience they can on our devices. So I work specifically with developers at Oak Ridge National Lab, but, but a variety of developers try to get the most best performance out of the GPUs. Uh, in addition to that, this year I became the representative to, um, uh, to OpenMP for, for NVIDIA. And so I wanted to kind of talk about what, what is our position, where, what are we doing with, with OpenMP. Um, so as you know, OpenMP, of course, is, is the standard when you want to do parallel programming with, with directives. Uh, it's been around now for more than 15 years, and uh, especially as multi-core CPUs have become commonplace, it's become really important skill for people to have, to know OpenMP and to use OpenMP to, to have parallelism within their codes. Um, in 2010, there was a lot of, of discussions going on about how OpenMP can be used with accelerators, with GPUs, with things like Xeon Phi, with DSPs, any of these things that are not CPUs, but an additive technology, these additive accelerators. And uh, we wanted to be a part of that discussion because we have a lot of experience, obviously, with uh, parallel processors and, and attached parallel processors. So we joined in 2010 and then, uh, or excuse me, 2011. Uh, and then in 2012, uh, our first real contribution that we made to OpenMP was around the Teams construct, which eventually became part of OpenMP4. Uh, and I'm going to mention a little more about that in a moment, so I'll kind of uh, glaze over that right now. Uh, in 20, um, 2013, earlier this year, uh, of course, OpenMP4 was released, and that includes support for accelerators and GPU-like devices. And so, um, as you can see, all of this moves very, very rapidly from discussions in 2010, uh, the be just the beginnings of how can we support accelerators to, to this year uh, having full official support for accelerators in the standard. So it's moving very rapidly. Um, but the question that I keep getting asked is, why on earth does NVIDIA care about OpenMP? Because we don't make shared memory parallel processors, and that's what people think OpenMP is about. Because traditionally, that's what it has been designed for. Uh, but with OpenMP4, of course, and the target directive in particular, um, OpenMP has really broadened its scope to more devices and different types of parallelism, SIMD parallelism, um, the team style parallelism that I'll discuss in a moment, uh, and really broadened its scope. And so it's really important to, um, to NVIDIA that we are part of this. From our point of view, when uh, a developer decides they want to write their code for an NVIDIA GPU, they have a choice to make of how they write that code. Um, the simplest for, for many users, if you happen to use math libraries, common math libraries like the BLAS and LAPAC, uh, uh, sparse linear algebra, dense linear algebra, um, you can take libraries and uh, pretty much little to no generate, uh, change to your code, you can drop in this library and get acceleration. Uh, that's a very small class of, of users that can take advantage of that. On the far opposite end are the parallel programming language. That's, that's CUDA that's OpenCL, where you can take your code, uh, you have the maximum flexibility of how to take the parallelism in the code, map it down to the hardware, but of course you have to make substantial changes to your code in order to take advantage of that. And for many users, that's not desirable. Uh, we believe compiler directives like OpenMP sit well in the middle. They're very close uh, to drop in acceleration, in that you don't make major changes to your code. Um, they're very additive to your, to your code. But at the same time, you can get a lot of the same flexibility that you can get out of a parallel programming language to really get good performance and really express the parallelism down to the hardware level. So for us, um, having compiler directives, having OpenMP is a way for us to reach a much broader set of developers. Um, back in the early parts of GPU computing, these were grad students who were just really wanted to do whatever it took to eke out that last bit of performance out of the GPUs. That laid the groundwork for parallel languages such as CUDA, and that, of course, exposed more developers to uh, parallel programming, to GPUs. Um, but in order for us to continue to reach more and more developers, we have to make GPUs more accessible, and OpenMP is one of the approaches that we're taking to do that. So I want to kind of expose you to one part of the uh, 4.0 specification that I think is kind of doesn't get as enough attention and it's one that that really does open up a new level of parallelism to OpenMP and makes programming OpenMP for GPUs possible and that's uh, the Teams construct. So 
Uh, here I have just a traditional parallel for loop that everyone has seen before. Uh, what this says is I take this loop and I want to run the iterations of this loop in parallel across a team of threads. So if you imagine I'm setting OMP num threads to eight, I now have a team of eight threads and the iterations of this loop are going to be distributed across those threads. Now in OpenMP4, if I want to take that and move that to a device like a GPU, like a DSP, like a Xeon Phi, I can add, now add the target directive. And what the target directive does is it says, look at what data I need, wrap all that data up, offload it to, to an accelerator device, move my entire execution to that device, and then run in parallel across a team of threads. And so that's the first step towards getting an accelerator uh, working with your code. Now, for certain uh, types of devices, um, that's a great solution, that, that's far enough. But for a, a massively parallel processor like a GPU, it's really beneficial to expose one more level of parallelism. And in OpenMP, the way you do that is with the Teams construct. And so here, uh, for convenience, I'm actually using the, the combined constructs in my code. So similar to a parallel four, here I'm using a target Teams directive. And so what this does is it creates what we call a league of teams. So where before we had one team of threads working on this loop, now we can have many teams. We can, have one, we can still have one, or on a device that is massively parallel and really wants a lot of teams, uh, we can have many more. And so uh, we create a league of team, and then I'm using the distribute directive to take that same loop, and I say, first what I want you to do is break it up and distribute it across my team. So each team has some section, some chunk of that loop, and then within each team, run it in parallel. So here's, here's what it looks like. So here is my first example I showed you, where I have an OpenMP target and an OpenMP parallel 4, and so the execution and the data is going to get offloaded to the device and run in parallel on, say, as I said before, 8, 16, some, some fixed number of threads. Now, for some devices, this is perfect. But for a GPU, which is a massively parallel device, we really want to expose the parallelism a little bit differently. And so, in this example, what I've done is by introducing the teams, you see here, uh, I'm doing the same computation. I'm starting at zero, I'm ending at n minus one, but now I've broken it up in a way that uh, can run well on a massively parallel device. Each of these teams is independent of each other, but I'm getting all of the same work, uh, the work done. And what I really like about these combined constructs is um, if I'm running on a device that really just needs one team, well, the team's construct says we'll run on one team. Um, if you're running on a device that wants many teams, wants that level of parallelism, you can use the same code to achieve that. So um, on the surface, I don't even need to think about how to break up my code. Uh, I don't have to think about the complexities of what if my block size doesn't divide into my loop nest. I don't necessarily have to think about that. So, so th what the question is, um, what am I showing with these question marks? And what I'm showing is, I'm, start I'm still starting at zero, I'm, I'm ending at n, but I allow the compiler in the runtime to decide how to divide this up. Now, I have the control that I could go back and define that explicitly, but I also can, can allow uh, the compiler to generate these intermediate values for me. So, whereas I could have explicitly broken this up and say, go from i equals zero to block size minus one, i equals block size to two block size minus one, and break it up explicitly, here, all of that is already done by the compiler, so I don't have to think about that complexity. And what's really nice is, again, on a device where one team is sufficient, we'll run one team from zero to n minus one. On a, on a device where um, where I want this level of parallelism, I can allow the compiler in the runtime to do the, the more complex part here. Now, I could have done it explicitly, and in the examples document, there is an example that shows it explicitly blocked up. Here, I'm allowing the compiler to do it. So, this is just the first step in the evolution of OpenMP. Uh, Michael Wong discussed at, at the uh, OpenMP BOF uh, two days ago that OpenMP is uh, taking on a, a new mission statement to really uh, drive for new levels of parallelism, new ways to expose your parallelism, new types of devices from not what we've traditionally thought of for OpenMP, and we continue to want to be part of that discussion. Um, 
hardware parallelism is not going away. Um, any number of talks here you could have attended this week that demonstrate the fact that more and more parallelism is becoming the norm from the top of the top 500 list to your laptops. And programmers absolutely want a simple, portable way to program for that. And OpenMP is a great solution for that. Um, we're really working for, you know, 4.0 is one step in the process. Uh, we're working on 4.1, we're working on 5.0, and going forward, how we can um, extend OpenMP to a broader range of devices. And, and from my perspective, I believe uh, three things I want to call out as my goals uh, is improved interoperability with other programming models. Uh, so uh, that could mean anything from CUDA and OpenCL to pthreads to of any other programming model. Make OpenMP um, interoperate with other options. Uh, improved portability. I want to make sure that, um, that you as a programmer, when you write your code, it will run well and perform well on a wide variety of devices without having to make significant changes. That's one of the real draws of OpenMP is uh, the fact that you can have a single code base. And lastly, I, I really feel like there's room for a better expressibility, different types of parallelism, higher level constructs, and so I'd like to really see OpenMP tackle that as well. So um, that's all I had to say. Uh, are there any more questions? Yes? What is the status of compiler support for OpenMP 4.0 with So the question is, um, what is the status of compilers for OpenMP 4.0 target and NVIDIA? And currently, there are no compilers yet. Um, I, there, I can't speak to a roadmap. There, there absolutely will be some, um, but I can't really speak to, to a roadmap right now. Um, but you know, we're aware of the fact that right now, um, you don't have an option, but we're definitely driving to, to try to give you that option as fast as possible. So, yes? So you mentioned here you want to make this as portable and as easy to use as possible. I was thinking if you already had existing OpenMP code, I understand you need to add the target that tells you not to do it on any form going off to the device. But you also had that distributed uh, phrase as well. If you had a simple loop, all you had was the target, would you get off the that next step of modifying your So the question is around, uh, in my example, you needed the, the teams and the distribute to get the best performance. So on a GPU today, uh, to get the best performance, uh, you would, would need the teams and distribute. Just because of the way our architecture is designed, it expects that additional level of parallelism. Now, um, you know, we're aware that, that that is a different model than what people um, have traditionally done. Um, and we do have a, a internal roadmap, I can't discuss it, of how to make that simpler uh, in the future so that you may not need, necessarily need to do that, that extra step. Um, I believe that what I've shown here is portable in that uh, it will run well on a variety of devices, but I recognize it is different than, a tra than the traditional loops that are already there. Yes, exactly. And so uh, you know, the question is, you know, how do we get there? Um, Right now, you will have to make that sort of change if you want to run on a GPU-type device. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's up to us to make that even easier for you in the future. So, yes? What's your opinion to OpenMP compared to OpenACC? So, the question is around OpenMP and OpenACC. Um, right now, OpenACC has, uh, has a market advantage in that they've came out sooner than, than OpenMP for Target. So, they've solved some of the problems that we haven't been able to solve yet. Um, Almost every member of the OpenMP Accelerator Working Group is also on OpenACC, so we're really in close discussions to make sure that we can converge on a common set of features. OpenACC is laser focused. It's, we are working on um, accelerators solely. OpenMP takes a more um, a conservative approach and is really going to learn from that experience so that we can drive and arrive at a common set of features. So uh, today, uh, there are differences OpenACC has some advantages in some places, OpenMP has advantages in other. Uh, in the future, the two standards uh, are driving towards a, a common feature set. So, will there be two standards in the future or only one in the future? Uh, that's hard to say. I mean, in the, in the near term, there absolutely there's going to be two standards for the near term. In the future, what, I'm, what I see is that we will converge on uh, common features, common capabilities, and then um, it'll be up to the market to decide whether we want two syntaxes or one syntax. So. Any other questions?